our thematic expression. It's clear good Tawas Alana Bay too. They were in Swaziland. Amen. When I said our thematic expression last week, you know, but anyway. Nbuhile, <laughs> amen. Thriving in hostile spaces through obedience. Thriving through obedience. Let's say thriving, thriving. Through, through obedience. If I have a son, I'm naming him Obedience Magnificent Mkiba. Hi, Are you guys complaining about my own child? <laughs> yes, babe, we, we are on it. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's such a beautiful name. Obedience is a thing. Amen. Talk about the five love languages. And they forget that the real one with God is obedience, right? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. To husbands, please don't say such things at home. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thriving in hostile spaces through obedience. Thriving through obedience. So the series is thriving in hostile spaces. Let me tell you this. 8 a.m., this message landed so well. Let them not out receive you. Let's make sure we receive with joy. Amen. Mvulan, do you have your mic? Let's organize the microphone for the man of God. They're exceedingly married. <laughs> Abundantly. <laughs> Above all. Genesis chapter 11. The book of Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. Let us go. This is the account of Terah's family line. Mm -hmm. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Mm -hmm. And Haran became the father of Lot. Yes. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in heir of the Chaldeans. Come on, somebody. In, in what? the land of his birth. In what? In heir. In heir. You are going to be saying, ooh, ooh, ah. <laughs> it's heir. Of the Chaldeans, yeah. not the Chaldeans, <laughs> the Chaldeans, right? In what? In her of the Chaldeans. And let's go for it, Mortar, with our private school English. <laughs> Abram and Nahor both married. Uh -huh. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, uh -huh. and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Yes. She was the daughter of Haran, uh -huh. the father of both Milka and Iska. I love how you said Haran. Yeah. Before 8 a.m., that's going to be Haran. Amen. <laughs> Haran. <laughs> the father of both who? Milka and, and Iska. Iska, yeah. The next verse. Now Sarai was childless uh -huh. because she was not Let's able to Let's underline this. She was not what? She was not able to conceive. Now Sarai was childless because she was not? And, and here, Bangor, I think we need to just, we, what we need to look into. And that is, there are no irrelevant, or there is no irrelevant information in Scripture. So, when Scripture says she was not able to conceive, it's not necessarily saying that she had the mechanisms to be able to conceive, but she was not conceiving. It's actually saying that, biologically speaking, she was possibly not able to conceive. So, so, so we've had people who've had wounds, wombs removed, have children. No, but when you go to the Toyota, yeah, yeah. There is no manufacturer that does not have spare parts. Please, 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 please. Toyota better than God. No, God has spare eyeballs, spare knees. There, there, there are spare parts with God. So, scripture says she was not able to cause, it, it, look, it could mean that she was, she, biologically she was fine, but she was not able to conceive. But also, there is another meaning where we could say she was possibly not in a place where she was able to. And in fact, as time goes, age was no longer on her side, and she was no longer really able to conceive. 
But that's not where we had. Let's go to verse 31. Terah took his son Abram, uh -huh. his grandson Lot, son of uh, Haran, uh -huh. and his daughter-in-law Sarai, uh -huh. the wife of his son uh, Abram. Uh -huh. And together they set out from uh -huh. Ur of the Chaldeans to uh -huh. go to Canaan. To go to where? To Canaan. Where were they going, Manuel? A Canaan. Yeah. Canaan land, right? Verse 32. But when they came to Haran, uh -huh. They settled there. Oh, my God. The, the initial intent was not to go to Haran. It was to go to Canaan. But they settled in a place called Haran. Uh, uh, there, 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 there are some of us, or we, we come from backgrounds where the original intent was to go to a certain geographical location. But because of various happenstance and various challenges that one could have faced, they settled in a certain place. The intention was not for Abraham to dwell in a place called Aran. Now, what is also interesting is this, Manuel. Can you believe that the mandate to go to, to Canaan didn't even start with Abraham? You know what I've seen, JB, is that at times when people don't obey, God skips a generation. Mm. One of the things that was quite interesting about Reinhard Bonke, he tells a story of how when he answered the call for Christ for all nations, God said to him, I've already spoken to this many people. They turned down the call. So, and, so, so in essence, Reinhard Bonke, with all of his efficiency, was not first choice. God does not need to operate with the first choice. First Adam, last Adam. You see what I mean? He, he, he can skip. But it, it's quite interesting that so many of us have found ourselves in Harans or Haran. And, and here's the thing. They settled there. There is a place where you were not setting out for, but you settled there. And no one's even powerful about it. You can thank him for settling in Haran. You can say, Barcelona, you don't know what God has done for me. I was on my way to Canaan. But it was so difficult. By the grace of God, I landed in Haran. And here's the funny thing. God can be good in Haran. We, we, we often talk about the permissible and the perfect will of God. Right? One of the things I've seen is that within even what we would define, not necessarily biblically, what we would define as the permissible will of God, you can experience a measure of God's goodness. But it's still not where you were meant to go. But when they came to Iran, they settled there. They, they, they settled there. We, we refuse to build theologies around where we settled. God's goodness knows no bounds. And there's a generation of people who are saying, we want to take it as far as possible. But when they came to Iran, they settled where? There. Let's go to verse 32. Terah lived 205 years uh -huh. and he died in Haran. But was that the place where he was going to? No. Let's go to Genesis 12. Yeah. From verse 1, we can start reading, Morton. The Lord had said to Abram, uh -huh. Go from your country, uh -huh. your people and your father's house, uh -huh. to the land I will show you. To hey, can, can you believe? Listen to this. He says... The Lord has said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Now, now we need to understand something. Abraham was not from Haran. He was from Ur of the Chaldees. <laughs> but now, God says to him, leave your country. The place of his settlement had become his country. So many of us are even identified over the places where we settled. 
It's not the real you. It's not exactly what God had called you for. But it's become your country. Maybe let me speak to you as a person who thinks intergenerationally. What if you are terror and your next generation will have to start from Haran? We we need to understand that there, there are generational implications for the next generation to start where we compromise. Or to start where we settled. You see, even that's why even this whole thing of choosing a life partner, you don't, don't, let it not be a settlement. Yeah. There are no safe brothers, you know, let me set. No, no, no. We don't settle. Yeah. And what I love about God is this. Is that he will call you prophetically because, hey, even though you are in Haran, that is not where you are supposed to be. There was a place that you had to go to. And God speaks to him. He says, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land. I will show you. Okay? How does this work? Number one, Abraham is childless. And now there's a call to say to him, leave your country, leave your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. Let's quickly rush to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's take it from in fact, before we read, imagine this. Imagine this to the, to the married gents. Imagine posing this to your wife. We are moving. Okay, where are we moving to? I don't know. But machine, I don't know. But, but God said I must move. How, how do I tell that to spare, but what? <laughs> we, we are moving. Baby, where are we moving to? The Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country and your people. Let's go to Hebrews 11, guys. Verse 8. Let's go for it. By what? By faith, Abraham, Uh when called to go to a place he would later receive as his intentions, Uh obeyed and went. He what? Obeyed and went. How did, what what did he do? What did he do, Mota? He obeyed and went even Even though though he did not know where he was going. When we walk with God, we don't always know where we are going. But we will obey him nonetheless because we know the person that called us. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. We might not know what the future holds, but at least we know the person who holds the future. We might not know where we are going, but we know him and we know that he's not a man to lie, not the son of man to change his mind. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, Let let me tell you something about the call of God. You see, I'm a pastor. I've never heard an audible voice say, go and start a church in four ways. I heard by faith. You, You won't always have the blueprint. We won't always have the business plan. We won't always have the the, the spreadsheets. But we will have the word of the Lord. He was not in the wind. He was not in the fire. But there was a still small voice. The Bible says they were led forth in peace. There is a peace that transcends all understanding. That invades your heart. There's a deep sense of calling that God has called me. Haran is not a bad place. It's just not a God place. What if God is not calling you from evil, but he's calling you out of a place that is outside of your purpose. He's calling you from a place where you will not be fruitful. Uh, You might even be fruitful, but not. Not. 
He did not know where he was going. By, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he will later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. You know, many of us want explanations to obey God. But I found that we get our explanation from obedience. In fact, when you obey, you capacitate yourself to be able to receive proper explanations from God. Oh, yes. In your current state of disobedience. I was even looking at, was it, listen to this, verse 7. Look at verse 7. Let's look at verse 7. Of the same chapter, Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith Noah, uh -huh. when warned about things not yet seen. In what? In holy fear built an ark to save his Come family. on, somebody. One of the things we need to understand about faith is that it's corresponding action. Listen to this. Listen to this. It says, when warned about things not yet seen. In other words, he had not yet reigned. But even though there was no precedence that he could draw from, he obeyed and he built. The problem with us is that we have a confession but without words. We don't only have what we say. We need to understand that whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If you say without doing, you won't see results. He built. Let's go back to Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Let's take it from verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. Okay, okay, okay. I will make you what? Into a great nation. Let's go to chapter 11. Chapter 11. Verse 30. Now Sarai was childless. Let's go to Genesis 12 verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. How provocative is this statement? You are calling me out. But there's a promise that is still not yet fulfilled. Come on, just the son. I'm not even asking for a nation. And God would say that is precisely the problem. Come on, Hannah, you are looking for just a son. But don't you know that Israel is in need of a prophet of the Lord? What if you are asking for two? Hey, hey, you, you want a son, but God is looking for a nation. I will make you into a great nation. And I will what? Now I want us to see something very interesting. Let's go to verse 4 of the same chapter. So Abram went uh -huh. as the Lord had told him, uh -huh. and Lot went with him. Uh -huh. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. But Mwale, this is a biological crisis. I will make a great nation at 75. 75! You are no longer even dealing with menopause. It's a different level altogether there. the things that Sarah later says are you saying that I'm going to have fun at this age in other words must I get my groove back <laughs> that's a miracle right it's there. a miracle it's a miracle yeah we don't appreciate what had to happen to Abraham yeah and what had to happen to Sarah yeah yeah Abraham was what 75 years old. When he what? When he set out from Haran. Barcelona, you are never too old to reach that. <clears throat> come on, come on. Some of you wanted to be doctors. Some of you wanted to be lawyers or whatever the case may be. And you settled on something. Let me tell you this. You can always answer the call of God. What we are about to say today is not just for Mary who thinks she's too young. It's also for Elizabeth who thinks she's too old. But what God is saying is that old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. In other words, no one will be precluded from participating in what it is that God wants to do. 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Next verse. 
he took his what? Let's he go for his mother. Wife, Sarai, uh -huh. His nephew Lord. Uh -huh. All the possessions they had accumulated. Let's go back to verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless you. But he had possessions. In other words, you can have possessions. And still not experience the blessing of the Lord. That maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. Come on, come on. You can be just, you say rich people. You can be another rich person without significance. But you can be Abraham, whom the Bible says, if you belong to Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And therefore, as according to his promise, God has to find a way to connect himself to Abraham. I don't know why he has to connect himself to that, but that's him making the man great. Without a title. He had possessions. He had success, but there was no significance. I was thinking about it. Imagine someone like Mutsep. Why is he involved? Not... He need to tell us about Mutsep. He is... He, he's a billionaire. But somehow he finds himself in the development of African football. Why? Because success without significance is just not enough. And God says to this man, I will make your name what? I will make you into a great nation, a childless man, and I will bless you. And I will make your name great. And you will be a what? You will be a blessing. You're a blessing. Let's go to verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. Uh -huh. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the what? And all peoples on earth uh -huh. will be blessed through you. But it will not be done in the place where you are in. I need you to migrate into a place of calling. It cannot be done from the place of your settlement. Come on, come on, Dr. Tumi, you're a great doctor. But probably that's not where you're going to make your biggest contribution to the world. There are songs that need to be written. There are things, Bangwane, that you'll never step into unless you step into purpose. Unless you step into the place outside of your settlement. Ooh. There are dimensions in blessing. Dimension number one, you are blessed. Dimension number two, others will be blessed through you. Because think about it, in all the dreams you're dreaming, I dreamt someone gave me 20 million. When, when are you dreaming? Being the benefactor instead of being the beneficiary. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Next verse. So Abraham went as the Lord had ah, told and, to, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Now, now let's look at the next verse. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 5. He took his wife Sarah, yeah. his nephew Lot, uh -huh. all the possessions. He had accumulated. accumulated possessions. In other words, there was an element about him that could have said, make this thing permanent. But it's a place of settlement. And the people they had acquired in Haran and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Let's now go to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord our God said to us as Herob, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Come on, in fact, let's just take it back. Just a sec. Sorry, sorry Fulan. Let's go. Let's, let's start in verse 3. Let's read it with conviction. Let's punch it. In the 40th year, uh -huh. on the first day of the 11th month, uh -huh. Moses proclaimed to the Israelites uh -huh. all the Lord had commanded him uh -huh. concerning them. Uh -huh. This was after he had defeated Sihon it's king. It's after he had what? He had defeated Sihon uh -huh. king of the Amorites, uh -huh. who reigned in the Hespon. Yes. And at Edrei had defeated Og king of Bashan. Who what? Who reigned in, uh, in Ashtaroth. Ashtar uh -huh east of the Jordan in the territory of Moab, uh -huh. Moses began to expound this law saying, the Lord our God said to us at Herob, uh -huh. you have stayed long enough you at this mountain. You have stayed here long enough on this mountain. 
But when we need to be careful of something very interesting. Listen to this. Egypt was a place of deliverance for Joseph's family. But 400 years later, it was a place of bondage. That is what happens when you overstay a place. Yes, you have seen a measure of my goodness here. But this is not where I called you to build. This is not what I called. Yes, you saw some victory. But listen to this. You have stayed long enough. On this mountain. Wow, what's the next line? What's the next line, Mota? Break camp come in on, advance. Come on, come on, come on. Scream it out. Do what? Break camp in oh, advance. And I'm going to do, oh, my God. You, you, you have settled, yeah. But God is saying, I didn't create you to settle. You need to break camp and advance. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we can't stay in Egypt. Because this is not a place of our promise. There might be garlics and lilies and all types of things. But God has called us to a place that is flowing with milk and honey. They missed the garlic, the onions. I understand the melons, but how do you miss? Let's say this thought. Pray camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Dr. Miles Monroe said something very profound. I don't know if it was Dr. Miles. He must have been one of these deep guys. <laughs> In fact, to someone else said, the greatest enemy to a new move of God are those who experience an old move of God. To the point where you never, you no longer want to leave that place. And God moves on quickly. You see like how Floyd uh, was one oh. day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, EFF. The next thing, we are Kwasa. Same, same day. And someone said, Murut, you look like Floyd. So if I'm a trigger... Be comforted in the name of the Lord. <laughs> and we are both stronger. Amen. <laughs> but, but here's the point. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, Joshua, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. You might go into mourning, but God will never go into mourning. Break camp. Move and advance. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy must come. I don't have enough time to be in depression for as long as I did have in the past. I'm now 36 years. I no longer have time. I must break camp. I must advance. I must move. We must take over territories. Come on, there's some mistakes we made in the 20s. We need to catch up in the 30s. I must break camp. Some people must break camp and move away from normalcy. When, when Peter, when Jesus died, Peter never went drinking. He went back to fishing. In other words, he went back to normal. But normal is the enemy of purpose. Break camp! And advance into the hill, country of the Amorites, called to all the neighboring peoples in the Araba, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast, to the land of the Covenants and to Lebanon, as far as the great river in the Euphrates. Was it not the great Eben poet who said, When I move, you move? Just like that. Boom, 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 boom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. Some people. Need to have the faith to move. But some people need to have the faith to stay. For, for, for some of us, we, we can't, we, we, we are in Haran. But we can't move. 
And then there are some of us who are so nomadic in our lifestyle. There is no stability whatsoever. And the word is, stay. Let's go to Genesis 26. Genesis 26. We'll read from verse 1. Now there was a famine in the land. Yes. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. Uh -huh. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Okay, let's highlight this. Where was, where was the famine? Now there was a what? There was a famine in the land. Uh -huh. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. Yes. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Yes. The Lord appeared to Isaac uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. Do not go down to Do Egypt. Do what? What, what must he do, Moto? What must he do there? Do not go down to Egypt. Do what? Live in the land where I tell you to live. Wow! Now, what we need to understand about Egypt is that Egypt is a type of a world system. The Bible says do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind. Now, what we saw in Abraham's life was that when things got difficult, they went to Egypt. But here, there was a word that was released to Isaac and the word was this don't leave the, the, the problem with many of us is that we are living tables we prayed for he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies they are talking behind my back this one does not like me it is irrelevant this is a place I prayed for you don't know the type of declarations and seeds that had to be sold I am not moving from what God has told me to stay in having done all to stand stand therefore having your bow shut up the Lord appeared to Isaac Let's ask a question. Let's ask a question. Can God stop you? The easy thing to do is to move on account of the famine. But what did God say? Do not go down to Egypt. We belong together. <laughs> it's on that... Let's go to the next verse. Stay in this land for a while. Stay in this land. And I will be with you. Uh -huh. And will bless you. Ooh. For to you and your descendants, uh -huh. I will give you all this land. Uh -huh. And I will confirm the oath I saw to your father, Abraham. But Salwane, we need to understand that our blessing is not overseas. It's where God said we must stay. Our blessing is not even in Johannesburg. It's where God said we must stay. There is a place called there. It is there that he has instructed to ravens to feed you. We will stay where you say we must stay. Because the blessing of God knows no geographical limitations. It will empower you in Pushpak Ridge. It will empower you in KZN. I will give all these lands. And I will confirm the oath I saw to your father Abraham. Come on, come on, come on. The easy thing is for you to leave your marriage. Maybe a new person will shift things. No, no, no. Stay! My mommy law doesn't like me. Stay! My husband lost his job. Stay. We are struggling to have kids. Stay. They've delayed in bringing funding. You stay. You attend. You attend. You attend. You attend. You go and write if you do it, even without being registered. They will register you afterwards. Stay. Stay in the promises of God. Stay in his statutes. Stay in his instruction. No matter how difficult it is. No matter how difficult it is. We are going to stay where God has instructed us. To stay. You can give the microphone to Nonto. Ben, you can come up. You can come up quickly. Let's just wait for this. Let's just wait for this. 
we are going to stay where God has told us to stay. The blessing will function because we stayed where he said we must stay. The blessing will function because we left when he said we must leave. It's not the geographical location that is going to invoke the blessing. It's the obedience. Come on, let's sing this song. We are
project it. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Isaac stayed in the sayings of the Lord. Isaac stayed in the word of God. He stayed. Now look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Isaac planted crops in that land. And in the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord had blessed him. Why was he blessed by the Lord? He stayed. He stayed in the word. He held on to the saints of the Lord. Hundredfold return. Hundredfold return. In a famine. Jeremiah 42 verse 13. Quickly, let's look at Jeremiah 42 verse 13. Jeremiah 42 verse 13. Jeremiah 42 verse 13. Jeremiah 42 verse 13. Okay, let me read it. However, if you say, we will not stay in this land and so disobey the Lord your God. Next verse. And if you say, no, we'll go and live in Egypt where we'll not see war or hear the trumpet or be hungry for bread. Next verse. Then hear the word of the Lord, you remnant of Judah. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. If you are determined to go to Egypt and you'd go to settle there, then the sword you fear will overtake you there. And the famine you dread will follow you into Egypt. And there you will die. 
And, and at times the death here, let's speak of it figuratively. We are New Testament people. At times it's not really fulfilling the purpose that God has called you for. At times it's experiencing spiritual death. But God is calling us to a place of obedience. And not only that, not only that, listen to this. He doesn't just give us a demand of obedience. He gives us a supply of obedience. And that is to say, he doesn't just give us lessons. He gives us his life so that we can have a supply of the very demands from his word. Number one, he has obeyed and he is in you, causing you to obey him. Let us close our eyes.